in speaking before you, I am not scared by the fear that you may listen to me with the lukewarmness. I come to join to your enthusiasm, ours, the stimulus of youth, and you cannot help but be indulgent. Sympathetic if Luvia saturate the atmosphere. Fraternal currents run in all directions. Generous souls listen. And consequently, I do not fear for my humble person, nor do I doubt your benevolence. Men of goodwill you seek only goodwill, and from the height where noble sentiments reside, you do not perceive petty trifles. You see the whole, and you judge the case, and you extend your hand to one who, like me, desires to join you in one single thought, in one single aspiration, the glory of genius, splendor of the motherland. Here is, in fact, the reason why we are gathered. In the history of nations, there are names that by themselves signify an achievement, that recall passion and greatness. Names that, like magic formulae, evoke pleasant and smiling thoughts. Names that become a pact, a symbol of peace, a bond of love between the nations. The names of Luna and Hidalgo belong to these. Their glories Illumine the two extremes of the globe, the East and the West, Spain and the Philippines. In uttering them, I believe I see two luminous arches that, starting from the both the regions, are going to be entwined there above, impelled by the feeling of common origin. And from the height unite two peoples with eternal bonds, Two peoples that sea and space separate in vain. Two peoples in which the seeds of disunion that man and their despotism blindly sow do not germinate. Luna and Hidalgo are Spanish as well as Philippine glories. They were born in the Philippines but they could have been born in Spain because genius knows no country. Genius sprouts everywhere. Genius is like light, air, the patrimony of everybody, cosmopolitan like space, like life, like God. The patriarchal era in the Philippines is waning. The deeds of her illustrious sons are no longer wasted away at home. The oriental chrysalis is leaving the cocoon. The morrow of a long day for those regions is announced in brilliant tints and rose-colored dawns. And that race, fallen into lethargy during the historic night while the sun illumines other continents, again awakens, moved by the electric impact that contact with the Western peoples produces, and she demands light, life, the civilization that at one time they bequeath her, thus confirming the internal laws of constant evolution, of change, of periodicity, of progress. You know this well, and you exalt in it, to you is due the beauty of the diamonds that the Philippines wears in her crown. She produced the precious tones. Europe gave them polish. And all of us contemplate proudly your work. We are the flame, the breath, the material furnished. They imbibed over there the poetry of nature. A nature grandiose and terrible in its cataclysms, in its evolutions, in its dynamism. A nature sweet, tranquil, and melancholy in its manifestation constant. 
static. A nature that stamps its seal on all that it creates and produces. Its children carry it wherever they go. Analyze, if not their character, their works. And however slightly you may know that people, you will see it in everything as forming their knowledge. As the soul that presides over everything, as the spring of the mechanism, as the substantial form, as the raw material, it is not possible not to reflect on what one's self feels. It is not possible to be one thing and do something else. The contradictions are only apparent. They are only paradoxes. In el espoliarium, through that canvas that is not mute, can be heard the tumult of the multitude. The shouting of the slaves, the metallic creaking of the armor of the corpses, the sobs of the bereaved, the murmurs of prayers, with such vigor and realism as one hears the din of thunder in the midst of the crash of the cataracts or the impressive and dreadful tremor of the earthquake. The same nature that engenders such phenomena intervenes also in those strokes. On the other hand, in Hidalgo's painting, the purest sentiment throbs, ideal expression of melancholy, beauty and weakness, victims of brute force. And it is because Hidalgo was born under the brilliant azure in that sky to the cooing of its sea breezes, in the midst of the serenity of its lakes, the poetry of its valleys, and the majestic harmony of its mountains and ranges. For that reason, in Lunas are the shadows, the contrasts, the moribund lights, mystery, and the terrible like the reverberation of the dark tempests of the tropics, the lightning and the roaring eruption of their volcanoes. For that reason, Hidalgo is all light, color, harmony, feeling limpidity like the Philippines in her moonlight nights, on her tranquil days, with her horizons that invite to meditation, and where the infinite laws, and both, despite being so distinct in themselves, in appearance at least coincide at bottom, as all our hearts do in spite of notable differences. In reflecting on their palette, the splendiferous rays of unfading glory with which they surround their native land, both express the spirit of our social, moral and political life mankind subjected to harsh tests unredeemed mankind reason and aspiration in an open struggle with preoccupation fanaticism and injustices because sentiments and opinions cut passage through the thickest walls because to them all bodies have pores, all are transparent, and if they lack pen, if the press does not help them, the palette and brushes will not only delete the eye, but will also be eloquent tributes. If the mother teaches her child her language in order that she may understand his joys, his necessities, or his sorrows, Spain, as mother, teaches also her language to the Philippines in spite of the opposition of those myopic men of pygmies who, desiring to ensure the present, do not see the future, do not weigh the consequences. Rakitic wet nurses, corrupt and corruptors, who tend to extinguish all legitimate feeling, who 
perverting the hearts of the people, so in them the germs of discord in order to reap later the fruit, the aconite, the death of future generations. But I forget those mysteries. Peace to those who are dead, because the dead are dead. They lack breath, soul, and the worms corrode them. Let us not evoke their dismal memory. Let us not bring their stench into the midst of our rejoicings. Fortunately, brothers are larger in number. Generosity and nobility are innate under the sky of Spain. All of you are a patent proof of that. You have responded unanimously. You have helped and you would have done more if more had been asked of you. Seated to share our supper and to the honor the illustrious sons of the Philippines, you honor also Spain because you have done very well. The boundaries of Spain are neither the Atlantic, nor the Cantabrian, and nor the Mediterranean. It would be ignominious for the water to place a darn to her grandeur. To her idea Spain is there there where her beneficent influence is felt and though her flag might disappear there would remain her memory eternal imperishable what does a piece of red and yellow cloth matter what do rifles and cannon matter there were a feeling of love of tenderness does not sprout. There were no fusion of ideas, unity of principles, harmony of opinions exist. Luna and Hidalgo belong as much to you as to us. You love them, and we see in them generous hopes, precious examples. The Filipino youth in Europe, ever enthusiastic, and other whose hearts always remain young for the disinterestedness and enthusiasm that characterize their actions, offer to Luna a crown, a modest gift, small indeed for our enthusiasm, but the most spontaneous and the most voluntary of all the gifts hitherto presented to him. But the gratitude of the Philippines towards her illustrious sons was not yet satisfied and desiring to give free rein to the thoughts that bubble in the mind, to the sentiments that abound in the heart, and to the words that escape from the lips. We have all come here to this banquet to join our wishes in order to give form to the mutual embrace of those two races that love one another and like one another, morally, socially, and politically united for a period of four centuries, so that they may form in the future one single nation in spirit, in their duties, in their views, in their privileges. I drink then to the health of our artists Luna and Hidalgo, legitimate and pure glories of two peoples. I drink to the health of the persons who have lent them a helping hand on the dolorous path of art. I drink to the health of the Filipino youth, sacred hope of my native land, that they may imitate such precious examples so that Mother Spain, solicitous and heedful of the welfare of her provinces, implement soon the reforms she has contemplated for a long time. The furrow is ready and the ground is not sterile. And I drink, finally, for the happiness of those parents who, deprived of the tenderness of their children, 
From those distant regions follow them with moist eyes and palpitating hearts across seas and space, sacrificing on the outdoor of the common welfare, the sweet consolations that are so scarce in the twilight of life, precious and lonely winter flowers that sprout along the snow-white borders of the grave.